How's everybody doing? Good morning. Uh, my name is Dallas Ackerman. I'm the Director of Communications with the Liberty School District. Uh, this is actually our monthly series that we hold um, each and every month during the regular school year. Uh, each, much, each month we pick a different topic that would be of interest to parents and community members and this month just so happens to be on our 11th elementary school, which is going to be housed in the facility we're sitting in right now, uh, Epic Elementary. Uh, community meetings actually started earlier this week, and uh, if you may have heard, uh, over 300 or nearly 300 attended on Monday night, another 100 plus on Tuesday. We have another meeting coming up next week, um, and as far as the enrollment window, the registration window has opened and as of this morning nearing 500 have already have already uh, signed up so um, we are here uh, with several of the key players in in this project and uh, they will introduce one another as we move along it's going to be a, a great opportunity with a smaller crowd to be able to interact and ask some great questions and we look forward to spending about the next hour or so with you here. We also have a couple of media members with us, uh, Ryan Dittmer from the Liberty Tribune. I also appreciate Sean McDowell from Fox 4 coming out um, to do a, a story on uh, on this today and of course Katie Dennison from Channel 18 here with the Liberty School District will also be taping this and we'll get this on our YouTube channel and on KLPS. So at this time I'm going to introduce our Executive Director of Elementary Education, Mr. Mike Brewer, and he will take us, uh, uh, at least lead us off and uh, get things started this morning. Thanks again for coming out. Thank you, Dallas, and I too want to thank you for being here and spending some time with us. What an exciting time to be in the Liberty Public Schools. Uh, this project is just going to be one that's so unique. Uh, we believe that we're going to have visitors from all over the nation coming and, and checking this school out, not just this school, but some of the other things we do in the school district. Uh, we are excited about Epic Elementary, but we're also excited about uh, what we've learned from our master teachers throughout the district that are going to be replicated in some ways here and then we'll replicate some of the things we learn at EPIC in some of the other buildings. So uh, Nancy and I have four children. I've shared this with many groups and, and we're just so blessed to have our children have come through the district. So whether you're part of EPIC or your children go to another uh, one of our excellent schools, uh, we think it's a win-win and we're excited to share uh, this new adventure with you all and with those uh, that are watching this at Channel 18. Again, my name is Mike Brewer and it is my privilege to introduce to you Dr. Michelle Schmitz. She is the, she's been selected to be the principal at EPIC. Uh, she was asked to move here and she's excited to do so. She was a very, very, and is a very, very successful principal uh, at Shoal Creek Elementary right now and I, I specifically told Dallas I wanted to introduce Michelle uh, because Dr. Schmitz uh, deserves a word of appreciation and I want to give that to her. Uh, I've been watching her work tireless, tirelessly uh, just working uh, so hard to make sure Epic gets off to a great start. I opened a new school. I know what that uh, takes to open a new school and then when you're opening an innovative school and running our largest elementary school in the district uh, you're definitely putting in a lot of hours and I've watched her do that so so I want to say thank you to Dr. Schmitz and she's going to uh, present the first part of our presentation thank you very much Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here this morning. Um, EPIC is, it stands for Every Person Inspired to Create. And today we're going to talk about what EPIC is. So by the time you leave here, you'll have a solid understanding of that. What makes it different and how can I enroll? Now this started about 18 months ago. So we have our board member with us, Kim Marie Graham, and she's going to take us through the history of how this all started. Good morning. Thank you for coming this morning and um, taking this opportunity to learn a little bit more about where we've come and where we're going. Um, 
this journey didn't start yesterday. There's been a lot of work already been put into it. And if you think back, some of you probably were in our community in the fall of 2012, and where we were then is a completely different place than where we are today. At that time, um, we had a failed levy election, we had a divided board, and we needed some direction on what we were going to do next. Um, and so the board said, we need to, more community feedback. We need to understand where we need to go together as a community. And we knew that we had a mission and vision and um, our mission, this is slightly changed from that time, but um, to inspire and equip all learners to discover and voice their voice and unlimited potential. And our vision for a community, future focused and with a passion for lifelong learning. So we put the Vision 2020 team together with community feedback using the mission and vision. Um, and we also told them, here are some things that you need to keep in mind as you're thinking about where we're going. We want you to keep these key tenets. Um, guarantee that our students are prepared for the future when they graduate, whatever their future is. Make sure that they're prepared for it. Um, we need to continue to recruit, hire, develop, and retain high quality educators. It's something that we have always focused on and will continue to focus on. And we want to make sure that we're using our space, our time, and our technology in efficient and effective ways. And so the Vision 2020 team, all of these people from the community, all sorts of different patrons in the community, parents, people who've been in the community for a long time and their children have already graduated, um, educators, all got together and they said, okay, here's what we think we need. Um, we need a new facility master plan. We need a new path for how we build buildings and how we're moving forward together. Um, we need to focus on technology. And you've seen some of that over the last year that we're focusing on technology and the Liberty Leads integration is, um, is what we have called that and you've seen all of the results. And we've updated our strategic plan so that it's a little more um, condensed, it's more nimble, and um, we're moving forward with a new strategy. That facility master plan that the team um, came up with called for using existing space, existing space, space we already have in new ways, not building new buildings. How do we go forward with what we already have? And to do that, another task force was put together called the Elementary Innovation Task Force. And that group was the one that, set, that we put together and said, okay, how do we use our space, this building that we already have, and if we were able to say, I'm, I have a clean slate, um, how would, what would that look like? And that team was comprised also of parents, teachers, administrators, and we asked them to discuss what would they change, what would they do differently, how would they go forward in a brand new space? And here's what they said. Okay. Here are the things we want in a brand new space. If we're gonna really rethink what we're doing, we wanna rethink how learning happens, what children do as they're learning. We wanna reconsider the time, the time that they're spending every day and the calendar that we're using. Okay. And we want spaces that are flexible. It's not just this is your classroom and you sit in it all day long. We want spaces that you can move across and work in differently and do different types of learning. And we also want to use technology from just from the get-go. We want it to be an essential part of the day. But there were also some things that they came back to us and said, we don't want to change these things. These are things that work well, and we want them to continue working well. We want high-quality educators. We want to keep really good educators like we have today, people who work with our kids and love our kids and make sure that they're succeeding. We want to have good, strong relationships with our students. We want face-to-face -face communication. Even though we're using technology, we want communication and collaboration. And we want opportunities for students to have exposure to the regular academic and specials programming. Just because we're using different space doesn't mean that we can't have music, we can't have specials. And PE, that's a big question. Okay, am I good? All right. All right. Okay, so that kind of tells you about our journey that we were on. And so to give you a real picture of what our journey came out to be, here's a video. Learn at my own pace. What if I can create and build every day? What if I can share what I learn with others? Epic is an innovative learning community designed to inspire students to be creative and think big. I'm Dr. Schmitz, principal of Epic Elementary. Epic is going to provide a learning environment where kids are learning all the time. Uh, we want them to move at their own pace, and we, we think EPIC is an opportunity to reimagine the framework of the educational environment. It's not just 25 kids sitting in a classroom being taught the same thing at the same time every day. Students learn different ways at different paces, and the great thing about technology, it helps us personalize their learning. 
you know, coupled with great instruction, students will be able to excel as far as they want to excel. Being able to use adaptive technology that's available now for students where learning is targeted towards what that student particularly needs. I can work on something I need to work on instead of something that's just a review. We're just altering the path of their learning and we're making it what they need, not what the whole class needs. So we have a data-rich system, so teachers will be able to look at exactly where students are and if they're on grade level, if they're above grade level, and how do we enhance those kids who are above the grade level? How do we encourage our students at grade level? And then how do we also do some interventions for the students who might not quite be where they're supposed to be? I went up from a sixth grade reading level to an eighth grade reading level, and it's helped me um, learn what I need to learn. And with the technology, we are going to have the tools to be able to really know where our kids are at all times. It's amazing to me what a child can do when they're interested in something. And that's one of the things that Epic is going to be able to do is really take the idea of creativity and, and looking at this small body of students and say, what is your passion? Expansive knowledge that they, they gain on things that they're passionate about is, is truly amazing. I like to control my learning because I can be in charge of what I'm learning about. One of the things that's most different is that we're allowing the time and space for creativity. We'll have the ability to bring in maker spaces so students will be able to use creativity, they'll be able to build, they'll be able to create something through different contexts, they'll be able to provide their learning and show their learning and their mastery in different ways. We want to create lifelong learners, we want to create students who have a passion to apply their learning. You know, kids love to showcase their learning. And so after they have gone so deep in their learning and just um, answered questions they've had, they love to talk about it. And so we're going to provide that audience for them. You know, we're going to have days where people can connect in the community and they can kind of talk about what they learned. And I am learning a tutorial on how to make an app. The people who are really successful today have new and different and paradigm shifting ideas. So let's start them now with being able to grow that creativity. The nice thing about Epic is we're going to be able to use online platforms, collaboration tools, where the students don't have to be in the same room. Actually, we can collaborate with experts outside of the school, outside of our state, outside of our nation. Virtual field trips or even video chats with experts from around the world. It's that technology piece that makes that content come alive for kids. And when content is alive for kids, they're enriched in what they're doing and their achievement will be higher. If my friend was in Africa, we could still do the same project. Or if they were like sick at home, we could still work together. It makes the classroom feel a lot larger than the square footage that it is. Project-based learning gives kids this amazing opportunity to practice learning standards and context. They'll be able to use real tools, real world things to solve the questions that they have. They get to become inventors, experimenters, they get to take an idea or a problem within the community and they get to design how they would solve that problem. And so I think you're going to see a lot of video, you're going to see a lot of multimedia, you're going to see um, a lot of kids doing projects together and creating something new out of something that has never been able to be done before. And the great opportunity that the kids are going to have at Epic is that we're going to be able to go out into the community and do some of our learning. And I see Epic as being an opportunity for us to educate children in a way that makes them more aware of and concerned about both their local community and the community at large. Which is really what we're trying to do. We're not trying to just get kids to get a degree at the end of 12 years. What we want them to see is how important their ideas and their thinking and their contribution is for, their, for the world. Okay, that was what Epic is going to be like. Now we're going to tell you a little bit about what the day looks like at Epic. And we've divided it into three parts. It's expedition, exploration, and personalization. And as we're moving through this, we did uh, go out into pilot classrooms this year. And you're going to be able to see just a little bit about what that looks like, and then I'll explain, explain it afterwards.
that really kind of gives you a feel of what the classroom is going to look like here at Epic. The first thing we're going to talk about is the expedition part. And if you think of an expedition, you're going in with a group of people on an expedition. And so in this time of the day, there are going to be collaborative groups working on projects. And it could be um, something like making uh, the community aware of hunger in our community. And those are some of the things that the pilot classrooms have been doing this year. But as they work together in groups, they're going to answer problems, questions. They're going to be engaged. The teacher will be able to facilitate conversations. And this is the part of the day that they're going to be able to work on those social skills, too. How do I give and take? How do I build consensus among members of my team? How do I be a leader? And sometimes, how do I be a group in a group that I'm not a leader? I have to follow someone else. So this part of the day is really the collaborative learning time. It's called expedition. The next part of the day we're going to walk into is the exploration part. During the exploration part of the day, kids are going to have the opportunity to be able to get into topics that they want to explore deeper. And when kids explore topics that are deeper for them, they are automatically engaged because they're invested in it. They may want to learn more about body systems. They may want to learn more about things in our community. And when they start to do that, they're really invested and engaged in that. And that's the part of the day that teachers will be able to support and guide their learning. And also, parents will be able to see um, the, the things they're doing because we're going to invite parents in. We're going to be able to exhibit the learning because kids love to showcase their learning. So during that part of the day is the exploration time. The next part of the day is called personalization. During the personalization time, kids are going to be able to learn at their own pace. You know, right now we have 30 kids in the classroom, and we pretty much stay towards what the teacher is teaching. But during the exploration time, kids are going to be able to move as fast as they need to move. Or if they have difficulty, the teacher is going to be able to reach them at their level during this time. So this is the personalization part. And during this time, you will see kids on computers during this time, but it's not the only time. We're going to be um, coupling it with good teacher instruction during this time. So one of the big things is that we will use technology to meet their needs during the day too, but they will not be sitting behind a computer all day long. We consider technology a tool for what we're doing. So when kids are researching, when they're doing collaborative groups, they may use technology during, during that time just like we do in the real world. So these are the three parts of the day. And you see expedition, exploration, and personalization. Now the thing is when you come into the classroom, you may not be able to see exploration going on at one time, expedition at the other time, because it's going to be interweaved throughout the day. So kids are going to be doing this throughout the day and also the personalization piece. The one big difference is you won't come into the classroom and see math at 9.30, reading at 10.30, writing at 11.30 because it's going to be intertwined throughout the day. So in kids, we've been in uh, pilot classrooms doing this this year, and they're really engaged. They love learning, and they love to talk about their learning. So that's what the day is going to look like next year. Next, we're going to tell you about the building, and Mr. Mike Brewer is going to come up and talk about the building. Thank you, Dr. Schmitz. And I'm going to get my pointer here. Thank you. Um, First of all, that video was awesome. I, I bet you like that video. I love watching that video. I've seen it probably 10 times, and I just still enjoy seeing, uh, listening to the kids talk about what they like and what makes them excited about school. You know, the cool thing is that video was really taken in our classrooms that are throughout our district. So that sends the message that a lot of this stuff's already happening. We just have an opportunity to create an, a space that is absolutely customized to this mission of helping kids find their voice. And so the other thing is, uh, and Kimmery alluded to this, we're trying to create a, we are creating a school district that's very, if as efficient as possible. So a space like this, can be found throughout our community uh, versus building a 12 million dollar elementary school okay so we don't always have to when we grow build a 12 million dollar elementary school we might be able to find some vacant space make a choice school out of it and uh, you know once we learn from this school and see how successful it will be and, and it will be quite successful I'm confident of that then we might be able to replicate that and deal with our growth challenges in a more affordable way and, and a more effective way. 
and so that's a cool thing and and that really came out of the innovation task force and the board's vision and and dr. Jungman's vision and and just really capitalizing on on what resources we have so central office will be moving out this afternoon I think and so uh, not all of us uh, HR is moving over to Blue Jay Tower uh, or the new district administrative center which is a four-story building and so we already had that and we might as well use that kind of space for adults and use this kind of space for kids kids were here before when this was the early childhood center and so it's really conducive to uh, children uh, one story has a basement uh, for for storm shelter and so it's really and so this is what the team really came up with as far as a floor plan and it's I think you'll find it to be really cool uh, I'll just start here. This is kindergarten, and there's two rooms here, but there's no, so you see no wall. So there'll be two teachers here, and up to 50 students, uh, but it'll be a very team-oriented, collaborative culture, okay? And uh, we're going with MSIP standards as far as class size. We need to make sure that we have a school that is replicable. And so you have to make sure that your class sizes are about what we can afford as a district and what we know we can manage. And we manage that size of, of uh, class size all over the district. And so two teachers will be working collaboratively together with uh, two groups of students, or one group of students if you want to say it that way. Uh, and this is first grade here and second grade and third grade okay so there's your kindergarten through third grade will be on this side and that's on the academic services side of our building if you know this school you came in this main entry likely and uh, we are I'm right there actually you are right in this area this is A and B, but this will be the multi-purpose room here uh, used for many different activities including PE okay so we're not going to build a gymnasium onto this school we're going to use the space in a very creative way now they'll have a playground out here too and we'll do a lot of outdoor stuff uh, so kids will get exercise they will get all the things that we know kids need uh, and we'll just do it in a creative way and this space is plenty big for lots of good uh, activities that would give the kids exercise uh, we will have a PE teacher we will have an art teacher we will have a music teacher we'll have a librarian okay uh, and they'll be uh, just used in a slightly different way in the fact that they won't have an art room lots of the art might happen in the classrooms and might happen in this space so we're just using space very creatively and in a fluid type of way which is kind of how our lives are anyway you know we're doing all kinds of things at all all at once you know so the kids might be working on a project and they they need some art advice and so the art teacher would come in for that unit during that time possibly just these are some ideas that we have uh, and then uh, here's a learning space that's fairly unique uh, this is just a comfortable learning space kids will have technology that thanks to the voters all kids will have much more access to technology throughout our district and including this school and so they might bring their device here and do some customized learning there uh, in a, or some collaboration and then we'll have special services here as well and we'll have we'll be able to take care of kids with speech needs and 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 kids with IEPs and things like that and you have some special services area back there uh, again I've already talked about the multi-purpose space administration and nurses office will be right here just to the left as you entered uh, right now Dallas is right there he'll be moving out of here soon and uh, that's uh, that's the communications office now but that will become uh, the print administrative area uh, and then fourth and fifth grade is on this side right here so uh, this is uh, a large space that's very uh, conducive to collaboration again at fourth and fifth grade uh, slightly different than the primary area in the fact that it's shaped differently and they've got a large common space here with learning stairs 
and they've got makerspace here and that's what's really cool too. Makerspace is where you can really create things and get dirty if you need to. No carpet in makerspace, you need to be able to clean it up because uh, sometimes when kids explore they make a mess and that's okay. Uh, they like that. Uh, so two makerspaces and then a broadcasting space. I was talking to Katie Dennison uh, who works with Channel 18 and I said hey well, I bet we'll be pulling on your expertise to help our kids here at Epic. Uh, and we have broadcasting space throughout the district in elementary schools from time to time but this will be designed for it with a green screen and be able to do some some neat creation because sometimes you create with your hands and sometimes you create digitally. And so uh, that is really the floor plan and so we'll just zoom into a couple of things. I've already talked about this but I wanted to visually go through it and then I'll just Re reiterate that we'll have large group space, small group collaboration. In fact, let me go back very quickly if I can. Uh, this is a kind of an area that small group collaboration would take place because uh, what we would have is glass here to be able to m really visually supervise the kids, but they would be able to have some su quiet space to work with. Like maybe they were working on a group project of six kids. And so we can still visually supervise them, but they don't have the noise and they can work in a quiet space. And, that, and you see that in our office, offices throughout the, uh, you know, throughout our nation really, is having quiet space for really thinking collaboratively. Um, so it's, it's really, in many ways, we got some of the ideas from the business community here too. Experimentation and creation, independent study. Sometimes kids need to be alone. Sometimes they should be working with groups. Uh, and then uh, we just talked already about that. Oh, something I did not talk about is just how we're going to use the hallways in a different way. The library, we will not have a, a library like you think of a library. We, we have very large hallways out in the academic services wing and uh, we will use that and line that with books and the kids will also get digital books as well and so books can be delivered in print copy which I love reading just books there's something about it I, I and I, reading's a passion of mine but also a lot of my books are delivered to me digitally and kids can do the same so uh, we'll have digital books and print books we use uh, office furniture in a very creative way as well to kind of break up the space, you know, so it won't feel so open. It'll be, here's a collaboration space. Well, tomorrow we need this whole space open, you know, so you can really have a lot of flexibility on how you use space. And I already talked about the multi-purpose space. We'll not have computer labs, but you're going to see computer labs go away uh, in all of our buildings, okay? Computer labs really are unnecessary if we have enough devices. And again, thanks to the voters, we're going to increase the amount of technology we have available to kids. And computer labs are valuable space for growth, and they're unnecessary, you know, to line up the kids and go to a computer lab. Uh, oops, I think I zoomed in. Thank you. My, my advisor right back here. That's Trey Kotzer, the director of technology. He's awesome. Uh, so anyway, computer labs will go away uh, throughout our district uh, just because they're, they're not necessary anymore. Um, and no traditional special spaces. We already talked about that. No traditional library space, but we will have a librarian. And again, reading will be uh, taught in a very effective manner, okay, so something I want to make sure you all know and everyone knows, those uh, at home, we will measure kids' uh, academic abilities the same way we measure all the kids because we need them to be on a trajectory of success and we need to make sure we intervene early and we need to know if they're falling off that trajectory and so that'll, that includes EPIC students and students throughout our district and so we'll use the same measurements uh, that we used for the same uh, assessments that we used throughout our district uh, for students here. And so that pretty much, uh, that just zooms in different areas in case I wanted to talk about that, but I've already talked about those spaces. And I think next we have, uh, yes, Carol Embry, our Chief Operations Officer is up next and she's gonna talk a little bit about uh, just the application and placement timeline. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brewer. There you go. Okay. Uh, 
Thank you again for your attendance today, and I'll zip through some of the details relative to what the day and the year will look like, as well as how do you enroll, and what does that mean for you and your student. So, the, um, the calendar, or excuse me, I'll, I'll talk about the calendar and daily schedule, so how are they different? We will